Good afternoon. This is the daily video update for Thursday, August 20th, 2020 for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. My name is Oscar Sinclair. We're talking about hope this week, where we each find hope in this time, in this world, and what it means to have hope. Joan Anderson, a member of our congregation, wrote to me the other day and wrote this. I am hopeful because of my experiences. I've lived through the bombing at Pearl Harbor and my teacher crying after her brother died in the early stage of World War II. I remember the ration books and my mother's horror when she realized she'd washed my dad's pants with a ration book in the pocket. She probably pictured her kids without shoes because she destroyed the coupons necessary to buy shoes. The local office assured her she wasn't the first to do that and replaced the last coupon so her fears were quickly dispensed. The day came when shoes were readily available. I remember the polio epidemic when a neighbor boy in an iron lung died. There was a rumor that bananas caused polio, so we didn't eat bananas. We drove 30 miles to a town for groceries to a town where there were no cases of polio, rather than go to the nearby town where there was polio. I remember the excitement when a vaccine was available. I had high school friends in Korea and also friends who served in Vietnam. I was a student at the University of Illinois after the Kent State shooting, which resulted in protesters trying to prevent students from going to classes by standing in doorways. Rioters dumping library card catalog drawers on the floor, a mass of humanity marching down the street with bald bats breaking out traffic signals, and the military jeep with barbed wire on the front meeting and dispersing the crowd. I remember too many assassinations and so many more tragedies that are part of the past of people in, the, in their mid-80s and older. And in other words, we got through it. And I have hope for our future. There was a speech last night, and you know, we don't endorse candidates. We can't endorse candidates as a, as a congregation. But a speech by a politician last night really, really struck me because it echoes these words that, that Joan wrote. What we do echoes through the generations. Whatever our backgrounds, we're all the children of Americans who fought the good fight. Great grandparents working in fire traps and sweatshops without rights or representation. Farmers losing their dreams to dust. Irish and Italians and, Catholic, and Asians and Latinos told to go back where they came from. Jews and Catholics, Muslims and Sikhs made to feel suspect for the way they worshipped. Black Americans chained and whipped and hanged, spit on for trying to sit at lunch counters, beaten for trying to vote. If anyone had a right to believe that this democracy did not work and could not work, it was those Americans, our ancestors. They were on the receiving end of a democracy that had fallen short all their lives. They knew how far the daily reality of America strayed from the myth, and yet, instead of giving up, they joined together and said, somehow, some way, we are going to make this work. We are going to bring those words in our founding documents to life. There is great hope in history. This fall, and on September 20th, a month from now, we'll celebrate the 150th anniversary of Universalism in Nebraska. That 150 years is full of stories of hope, full of moments when it looked like maybe we couldn't do it. And somehow, the congregation or the people or the community or the town or the country persevered. And just that fact, just the fact that none of those things was the end of the story is a place to find hope. Thank you, Joan. Thank you also to former President Obama for that speech, um, and I'll see you all tomorrow.